We are recording. Thank you very much, Athena. So seeing that it is 1030 and I have a presence of a quorum, I'm calling this meeting of GOL to order. It is June 30, 2021, and um, we are being recorded. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone, and the instructions I can read out if needed. No person, uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. We have no visitors today. Uh, we just have the five members of my committee, so I'm just going to make sure that everyone can be heard. And the and lovely Emily Reardon. Uh, yes, Emily is here, that is correct. Um, and Athena. Athena is also here. Um, I think that's also true. And I think, Pat, uh, I'll start with you. Can you be heard? No. That's what I thought. Okay, Mandy. I'm present. Thank you very much, Darcy. Here. And Sarah. Present. Thank you. So all the members are present and could be heard. And so um, I'm going to put the agenda up on the screen. It's uh, actually uh, not all that uh, complicated, but I'm going to make a couple changes because that's just what happens. Um, so here we go. Now let me find my share screen. And there it is. And there it is. So um, we're going to begin this morning with the continued review of the Curly Citation. And uh, then I'm going to turn to an item unanticipated. Um, despite my best efforts, I have two one uh, citation that we need to review and one resolution. And so that resolution will come second under the 48 hour rule. Um, and then we will turn to um, the OCA process. Okay. So let's I'm gonna stop sharing that. Any questions about the agenda? All right. I'm going to put up the citation and I'm going to share it with you. And so let's do that. Okay. So this is now, I believe, the fourth version of the citation, including the one that we voted. This is a uh, changed version from the one that was voted on at the last GOL meeting of a vote, uh, I believe it was three to one. Um, so it has been changed and revised somewhat. Everyone has uh, had access to this in the packet. Um, and I have made one just for the sponsors to be aware of. When I went through it, I did in this, the very first now, therefore, I returned to the original title to uh, mention Officer Curley's full name and put her maiden name next to it. So if they're not happy with that, I can take it out. But that is the only change I made um, from what this was. And uh, so I think my feeling is this is a much better document. Um, after all the reviews and, and changes we've gone through, I think it's a much better document. I think that it addresses many of the concerns that have been expressed by uh, both members of the public and by members of this committee. Um, we have worked very hard to remove any kind of identifying um, description and take out any kind of judgmental or uh, uh, language that is other than matter of fact. And um, we have uh, made the date much less uh, clear. And, but I think we also felt, though the sponsors, the other two sponsors can speak for themselves, that um, the narrative is essential uh, in the sense that it, anyone reading this needs to understand why Officer Curley was given this particular award. So um, I don't know if the sponsors, uh, so I see Mandy's hand up, so I'll start with Mandy. I was just gonna make the motion to declare it, to declare it clear, consistent and actionable. Okay, uh, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. All right, we have a motion and seconded. Um, discussion. Darcy. Yeah, um, I 
I was, I know I contacted Lynn after our last meeting. Yeah, we heard about that, Darcy. Yeah, we did. Pardon? We heard about that, yes. Right. Well, this is, I'm, 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 uh, I'm just letting people know that I contacted her because I realized that um, the, the complaint that been, had been made about the, the uh, details showing up in this um, had gone to the town manager and I had received a copy of the town manager's report, but I, for some reason I thought it had gone to the whole full council. So I just thought that this group should be aware of that. And the fact that the town manager um, actually removed the entire narrative from the May 17th town manager report. Um, so it just has a paragraph noting that the citation was made, but the, the attachment that was at the end of the report um, was edited out because of those concerns. And I believe that's, that was the source of our, um, of this, of the details that went into this proclamation or this citation. So in any event, um, I, I'm still very uncomfortable with just giving the details of the narrative. And I, um, I feel like this group, <clears throat> including myself, um, are not really you know, professionals as far as knowing what is responsible for uh, um, reporting of, of mental health incidents suicide attempt suicide i wouldn't you know i i googled the it suicide, I, the word suicide is not used in this document right but there is some that is what it was I, um, I i have no idea what it was and i think that was an excellent point and the removal of it i thought was an excellent could i, finish, step. Could I Go finish, ahead, finish um i feel like we should um uh, we, sh we should weigh in with the Disability Access um, Committee and the police department as to what they normally report about these things that's going to get um, major publishing because I'm sure that they have guidelines and we didn't look into in any particular guidelines when we put this together that I know of. Even though I'm, I completely see the, that the intent of this is like really good and I totally commend this officer. I just think we don't, we aren't, um, um, this committee is not necessarily expert on how to responsibly report these types of things. So is this is this a matter of clarity, consistency, or actionability? Which which of the three are you uh, concerned about here? Or are you talking about substance? Because you're talking about substance, that's a different matter. Right now, we're concerned with clarity, consistency, and action. Is this not clear? Is it not consistent? Or is it not actionable? What, what's the issue? Uh, that's a good question because it is content. It is content. Then um, maybe that's something you need to raise with the council because here we're not discussing content. We're trying to simply find out if it's clear, consistent, actionable. I think that the sponsors are here though, so yes, they, they can, are. They can uh, do what they what they want, and I totally respect the sponsors. And I I I did you know I I. It occur, occurred to me after, um, you know, that I don't think that it was possible for me to actually talk to the sponsors, right? Because they're both on the committee and wouldn't that be violating the open meeting law? I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about now. Are you talking about talking to the sponsors about the content of their um, uh, document or are you talking about simply telling the sponsors out as a matter of courtesy that you are going to the council president to ask her to remove from the agenda an item that we had already voted and sent to the council president. So which is it? Is it that you wanted to talk about the content of this document or you wanted as a courtesy simply to reach out to them and tell them that even though we had voted this and sent it to the uh, council president and it was on the agenda, 
you were going to go and ask her to take it off the agenda. So what was it you wanted to talk to them about? Um, I agree that it would have been better to talk to the to the sponsors, um, but I am confused about the open meeting law. Um, so uh, that's beside the point. But um, but I do think that we are not experts on this issue. Um, uh, so that is all I have to say about it at this time. Uh, Mandy. Thank you for clarifying, George, that this committee does not deal with substance, particularly because the council has asked us not to deal with substance. And I believe most of that has been, a, a lot of the times that request has come from you, Darcy. Um, so the fact that you keep bringing up substance on this is very frustrating because the motion is to declare it clear, consistent, and actionable. And I haven't heard any objections to either clarity, consistency, or actionability. And so you're more than welcome to object to the substance, but you're not a sponsor. And so the objection comes at the council with a potential vote against it at the council. That's fine. But this committee is clarity, consistency, and actionability only. And I would really appreciate it if Darcy, you could stick to that. Yeah. I also feel like uh, I'm not an expert in forest management or wildlife preservation. I'm not a, a, an expert in, um, in a lot of things that I vote on. And I work hard to get a sense of the uh, depth of content. I work hard to listen to people's responses, whether I agree with them or not and take what I can and therefore often change. So the expert argument is kind of silly and a waste of our time. As far as uh, our outreach, um, I have spoken on two occasions to Chief Livingston. Um, he is well aware of this document. He's actually looked at it. Um, he was uh, actually very um, moved by the fact that the council was considering doing something like this. And um, the uh, details of this, which we've now gone over many times um, with I think a very legitimate concern about uh, the graphic detail yes. and the potential for yes. uh, upsetting someone. We have gone through this very carefully um, to try and remove anything that we would consider to be um, a language that might be upsetting. Um, we're not experts, I agree, but that's not, we're not pretending to be. Um, but the, uh, the chief shared with me the actual document that was sent to the Department of Mental Health, the narrative that was created by uh, an officer in his department, um, forwarding it to the Department of Mental Health, asking that Officer Curley, who at that time was actually Officer Contardo, um, be recognized for this particular action. So it wasn't uh, uh, submitted as a, you know, like Officer Curley's been with us for many years and she's really strong CIT and we think she does a great job. It was submitted for this specific incident um, and the uh, details that were in Paul's report and the details that are in this uh, citation are based on that document, not based on Paul's um, uh, the, the report. Um, so, um, I mean, I absolutely, uh, uh, I think I've come to appreciate much more so now um, the concerns that have been raised. And I think they are legitimate concerns and it's something that we have taken very seriously. And we've done everything that we think we can do to both um, respond to those legitimate concerns, but also to recognize what was an extraordinary, I think, act of, of professionalism and, and courage in a very difficult situation. And we wanna recognize that and, and honor that. So I think the narrative is important and to take it out uh, would basically make this uh, pretty much pointless other than just saying, congratulations Officer Curley for getting this nice award. Um, and the public will have no idea um, why actually she did get it. Um, so um, this is now the fourth version, um, but I, again, I'm certainly willing to hear other thoughts on this. Um, so uh, anyone else that has anything they'd like to add All right, um, seeing that there is no further comment, um, I'd like to go to a vote. Um, so it's been made and seconded, the motion is made and seconded to declare um, 
Citation and recognition of Officer Rita Curley and Nate Contardo upon receiving the Law Enforcement Exemplary Performance Award from the Massachusetts Department of Mental Health. Um, to be clear, consistent, and actionable. Um, and so I'm going to begin. Uh, and I'll, I'm sorry, I have a hand raised, Pat. Yeah, I just want to say uh, it's clear we need to get round four, but there are a couple of spacing issues that need Still to be. In the document. Okay. All right. Yeah. Round four comes out, and you think there's some spacing issues? Okay. Yes. I, I went, just, okay. There's uh, an extra space there and an extra space here, or at least I changed it on the document that I had. Okay. There's well, three we'll, places, we'll, I think. Three, it, three places. It, there's three places that are blue underlined, George. Yeah. So is they can I, be fixed easily. I'm sorry. Three places. They should be fixed. Right. See the blue underlines? It's those three places. Here. Okay, all right. I, I see. Okay. I'm moving right. my mouse, but you can't see that. Sorry. That's all right. I, I keep scrolling. I apologize. But yes, I see those places. And are the sponsors, the other two sponsors, uh, um, okay with the fact that I introduced her maiden name a second time just for clarity? So at the end, uh, so now, therefore, we, the Amistad Council, be hereby recognized. Are they okay with that? Yeah. Or do you want to go back? Okay. Yep. So, Good. All right. All right. So, uh, motion is before us. I'm going to uh, uh, try to do this in alphabetical order. Pat, you are first. Aye. Okay. Um, Mandy. Aye. Uh, uh, I can't do alphabetical order in my head. <laughs> Darcy, I'm sorry. You're out of order. Darcy. Abstain. Um, uh, Sarah. Aye. And the chair is an aye. So the vote is four in favor, none against, and one abstention. Um, the second document that we have in front of us um, is a resolution that has been brought forward by uh, three sponsors, all three of whom, in fact, are members of this committee. Um, in spite of my desperate plea not to do this, um, they. <laughs> <laughs> when they had to do it anyway, but there is a time sensitivity to this, I understand. And so I'm going to put this up on the screen. And um, can everyone see it? Whoop, not if I do that. Okay. So this, I'm sorry. We can see it. Thank you. Um, this is a sponsors by uh, uh, Pat and uh, Darcy and uh, Mandy. And um, I've looked at it. I don't know if anyone else has had a chance to look at it. Obviously, three the three sponsors have looked at it. So Sarah, I guess it's just you and me that uh, are seeing this for the first time. Um, I had one thought to the sponsors that um, came to me right away. I would suggest that I think the language is fine. I had no problem. I didn't see anything in terms of language or any sorts of scrivener changes. But I would suggest making it two separate. Um, resolutions. Um, it's a little odd to me that some of the whereas is applied to one conclusion and some of the whereas is applied to another conclusion, right? And um, I would suggest that just, just break it into two and present them both separately to the council um, would be my suggestion. Um, when I thought about it, I thought, you know, imagine a resolution which has like five or six different things, and, and maybe this is the way it's done. So I'm, I'm happy to be uh, instructed here that, in fact, constantly uh, legislatures do multiple resolutions with multiple whereas is applying to different therefores. Um, but that was my only suggestion uh, would be to break it into two. Um, so Mandy. Yeah, I'll take that one since I'm the one that drafted this. And well, um, in some sense, it would be hard because a lot of the whereas would be repeated in both. There'd be mm -hmm. only about one that might not be. Um, the S-868 allows a town to add a fee to real estate transactions. Um, yep, right. and, and those fees that are collected would go to support affordable housing. In fact, the way it's written, they would go into the, since we have a municipal housing trust, they would go into the housing trusts mm -hmm. held by the housing trust. S-1853 does two things, one mm -hmm. of which is support affordable housing, but then it also adds a climate action thing on top of it. Okay. And so they're both all right. basically housing, All right. affordable housing initiatives, which is okay. why I combined them, even right. though the other one happens to also have this climate change yeah. portion to it. Okay. So I, I think it's 
you know, it, it is strange, but I think it's more efficient to do it this way. Okay. Okay, good. The, the, what we're saying is that basically um, the common element is housing and, yeah. and that's why they're together. It's not just two, so it's not, again, a, a carelessness on my part, but one is it's not just a climate action um, bill, it's actually a housing bill with a climate action element attached to it. So Correct. it's really affordable housing. Thank you, um, that you're absolutely right, okay. Um, I don't know, Sarah, I didn't have any other um, uh, things about the language, I thought it was fine. Um, uh, I don't see your hand up, I don't see anyone's hand up, so I'm prepared to entertain a motion to declare the resolution in support of S-868, an act empowering cities and towns to impose a fee on certain real estate transactions to support affordable housing, comma, and S 1853, an act providing for climate change, adaptation, infrastructure, and affordable housing investments in the Commonwealth. A second. And the second is Darcy, oh, thank sorry. you. Sorry, I should have had Mandy Jo, sorry. That's quite all right. Uh, Darcy, second. Um, I see no further discussion, anyone? Then I'm gonna move immediately to vote. This time I will try to do it in alphabetical order. Um, Pat. Aye. Uh, Darcy. Yes. Mandy. Aye. The chair is an aye. And Sarah. Aye. Aye. It's unanimous 5 0. Um, we also, now the custom is in the council for the sponsor or sponsors to introduce this briefly and to read uh, not the entire document, but uh, maybe provide a brief summary of the, um, as Mandy just did, and then read one of the therefores. Um, I leave that up to the sponsors to sort out, but it would be a courtesy to reach out to uh, Lynn and let her know who is going to do it. Um, so um, I just put that out there. For the preceding one, the citation, again, I think the three sponsors need to just touch base with each other and, and agree as to who, um, for instance, in, this, in the case of the citation, since there are three Therefore, perhaps each one of us could read one. I think that would be nice. But um, anyway, that's something for uh, the sponsors of both these uh, documents to try and settle and then reach out to Lynn to let her know. Um, I think it helps her if she knows who's gonna do what. Okay. All right. All right, the main event we've all been waiting for. Um, and put this up on the screen. I don't know why the count get rid of that thing. Get rid of that thing. Um, get rid of that thing. And all right. Share screen. All right. I'm going to turn review. I'm going to get this. So we can do tracking, it's on, good. Um, I'm gonna go up to the top for a moment and try to put this into context. It's been a while since we've looked at it and for obviously many reasons. Um, and you can all help me as to where we should start back in. Can I you make I it a it. tiny bit smaller so I can see the comments? Oh, I should have printed it out. Okay, let me see if I can move it. it. Oh, I said, hang on for a second. Hang on a second. It's not critical. Can you see that's the helpful. comments? Can you see the More comments or less. now? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Is it okay for everybody else? Was, okay, let me just, let me just, there we go. How's that? Speak up if there's a problem. That's fine for me. Does it work for everyone else? Fine for me. All right, um, my hope is, and I'm sure that's the hope of all of you, is that we can get through this today um, with a consensus uh, and that I can then bring it to the council. I think it's on July 12th um, is the next council meeting um, with a proposal, with proposed uh, uh, policy. Um, so that's the hope. Um, when we dealt with this last time, I said we would come back to what I call the preamble um, and go through it one last time once we have done the rest of the document. We had a discussion about it, and there's a question about policy, procedures, process, right? There's a whole bunch of different words here. Um, and so I think once we're done with this, we can go back and, and just go through the, the, the preamble 
and I think we can get it clear. But I don't want to start with that today. Um, okay. We then did vacancy. And um, again, it's helpful for me. I'll be taking some notes here. But uh, in my report, um, Darcy, I remember that you had a concern about impending vacancy. I don't know if you still have that. Um, and there may have been other concerns. But uh, and so please speak up. And I cannot see your uh, faces right now because of the nature of the screen. So I'm going to ask people just to speak up and ask to be recognized or just speak up um, because I can't see you to recognize you. Um, if someone else can see, please say somebody has their hand raised. But I think people can just speak up here. Um, so go Gorge, ahead. My, go ahead. Could, could you just? explain is it is this a document that i have directly commented on i'm oh. not sure this is the right one that we dealt with last time uh it it, it uh okay that's a problem i guess i'm way. not seeing changes i thought we had talked about and accepted uh well then, vacancy uh, well, then let's start with vacancy, and it may be that there is a version of this that somehow is buried in my multiple files that uh, I've lost track of. That's certainly very possible. Um, I thought I looked very carefully and uh, went through this uh, in advance to highlight certain places that I thought there were still areas for discussion, for instance, in community activity form. Um, I don't remember. Okay, so um, I apologize. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mandy Jo's got her hand up. Please, Mandy. Uh, no, that, up. that was my comment was, I don't think we're working from the document that we dealt with last time and agreed to a number of, I mean, because we got through a bunch of these last time, didn't we? We did, but I don't know that we, I don't recall any specific changes. Um, well, I, I guess that, I, my comment is I have a document pulled up that is almost titled the same as yours, but doesn't show any of the changes you had had in that document. That's why I'm confused. So Mandy, do you have a document in front of you that has changes in it that you feel we made, or you have a document that- I have a document with my own comments from the last time, the last time this was in a packet, right. and right. It, this isn't showing the same changes that were there, and then obviously my comments aren't in that, but it's not showing the same changes that were there. Well, let's, mm -hmm. let's for a moment, um, I may put yours up on the screen, because if we agree that that is a more recent document, then we'll work from that. I'm not convinced of that yet, but it's very- I'm likely. not sure. I, I yeah, just- That's right. So if you're looking at your document, which you have in front of you, and everyone else is looking at the one on the screen, um, the first, my first comment was that we went through the preamble and we talked about it, but we didn't make any changes to it because we felt we had to come back after we've gone through the rest of the document to decide whether we just want to call this a policy where, and, and how we want to, because it clearly are some procedural elements in this, some fairly detailed things. So it does seem to be more than just a policy. Um, it's also a set of procedures. But I felt the issue was really more simple wording that we'll just go back and clarify that first paragraph. And uh, we also struck, um, though I did not take it out, so I have not removed it yet. We struck the second paragraph um, because we felt that um, this should document, as my comments say in the, in, the, in the margin, this should be something that can be useful going forward, even if names of committees change, which they could. Um, so uh, I felt that um, uh, the reference, for instance, so that's, there's a lot that's lined out, but it could be put back in. Um, I felt it should be removed. Um, and the final sentence, the following policy, uh, if that's what we finally agree upon, shall apply to all appointments to multiple member bodies made by the town council. Again, we have to come back to that. Um, I'm not saying we won't keep it, but for instance, we didn't follow. I mean, if we if, if we had this policy in place, what we did for the DAB um, actually doesn't follow it. So uh, maybe that's not a big deal, but um, so that was my understanding of the, of the preamble, okay? And if anyone has a different understanding or if they have different wording, um, if, if they have, uh, yeah, go ahead, Mandy. I just have two minor changes to the chart, the third line. 
Uh, okay, so tell us what they are and we'll see. Um, you do. have a parenthetical of charter section 2.9 C and then there's a random E. E has no bearing, so it should just be deleted. Thank you. And then it needs an extra pair, a closed parenthetical after the B so that after the B there's a double parenthetical. All right, thank you. And then I, one note I had that I made was the next sentence, the herein is, is laid out. out the policy which is to govern, is to govern such appointments. Right. But it doesn't really govern the appointments. It governs how recommendations are made for right. the appointments. I, I think Go I ahead. would agree with that. You would agree, yeah. Okay. Would would disagree. Oh, I'm sorry. I take that. Take Go ahead, please. Disagree. Go ahead. Uh, if it is governing recommendations, then it's also governing appointments. Um, the council can not take the recommendations. It can refuse them. I mean, they're two separate votes. Well, we're we're creating a town wide policy for right. all committees. Which means right. right, right. So, why why would it not be yeah. for the whole town council if we're making a town wide policy? Well, I guess my think there's a difference between getting to a recommendation and getting to a vote. And this policy is how you get to the recommendation because if you look at the very end of the policy, there's nothing about the council actually voting. It's all, how does the committee make a recommendation? So it governs how that recommendation is gotten to, not right. how the council votes on, ultimately votes on that recommendation. If it's supposed to govern how the council votes on the recommendation, then we need more sections, I guess, mm -hmm. on things like how quickly they're brought on an agenda and all sorts of things like that. And this policy doesn't talk about at all the actual council meeting where appointments are voted on, it talks about, it's all about committees, right. which is the recommendations, not the actual appointment. I think, I don't know, I, I guess I feel like somehow. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, this is why I suggested we come back to this um, after we're done and we've gone through it in all detail. We come back to the preamble and address uh, Darcy's concern and Mandy's comment. I think at this point, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where I stand. Um, uh, so I think I'd like to hold off. I'm not, we're not gonna make any decision. Obviously we're not gonna make a decision on this preamble right now. Right now, I guess I'm looking for any kind of scrivener changes or any kinds of actual changes that you feel we made um, that I have lost. I don't think there are any other than the typos here. Not um, in not in the preamble. Right. And and I Darcy, I hear your concern and I'm not we will come back to it. Um yeah. at when we hopefully this this morning we will come back to it. Yeah, um, I was just going to say that I think this document is um you and I met on this, George, before we started, remember? Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. so I think this is the document that resulted from that initial meeting. Um, there's something and there's something later that somehow should be up here rather than this. Uh, I, think that's that's, a, yeah. I think that we, uh, yeah, because this document just has your and my comments on it. Um, not Mandy's or anyone else. Not anybody else's. Um, so I, I'm oh. guessing that Mandy Joe is right that we have some other document. Um, but anyway, yeah, okay, no, it probably she, doesn't make that she, much difference. Well, as long as Mandy has her document in front of her with her comment, um, I'm hoping that we can still work with this. And I apologize uh, if I have uh, gotten this, a, a slightly older version that has eliminated um, Mandy's edits. George? Um, yes, Pat? Could we get Mandy's up instead of this one? Uh, that's an option. I mean, Mandy, when you're looking at what Not you have- all my edits were accepted, I just, I'm, I'm looking at the document on the screen and the document I made edits to, and some of George's edits aren't on the screen, but are in the document. Oh, I was okay. at, that's yeah. my concern is not that mine aren't there because mine shouldn't be there. That's what we discuss in committee, but 
comments George had made and edits George had made aren't on the document we're staring at on the screen, but were in a document that was in a previous packet that I made edits to my own comments to. Right. All right. All right. All right. Let me just bear for me with a sec for a second. And I'm not sure why, George, because other than the addition I of MJA's comments to my saved document, the titles are the same. So I'm not quite understanding why they don't agree. Well, I think I may have lost track of, of yours. And uh... I just have to walk away for a second as you're finding all of this. And I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. I'm willing to put mine up, but I also think mine, I don't, I doubt I was the one tracking looking at my thing, tracking the changes we actually made on June 2nd, the most recent time I saw this. June 2nd. In a packet. All right. All right, hang on for a moment. Just for a moment, bear with me. And yeah, so maybe there's more. something saved in a June 2nd file I, for you. I, so. I will take a look. Okay. June 2nd. Bear with me, I'm sorry. Maybe the May 19th meeting? Uh, I'm working through it. Um, Yeah, as we all know, we've been focused on DAB, we focused on FinCom. Um, what other possible place? Hang on for a minute. All right, it's not coming up. Um, it's maybe here, but buried somewhere. Um, it's not in the uh, files for the previous three meetings. Let me take one quick look. I think it's also not May 19th. Let me take a quick look at May 19th again. No. Um, so the June 2nd packet had the one with my comments on it as the only document in that packet, it looks like, but. Yeah. You wanna put that up on the screen? We can take a look at it. I can. Okay, I will, um, for the moment, stop share. We'll see what you have and we'll see what I have. Okay, go ahead. So I, I'm just gonna to move to vacancy. For example, the one you had up didn't have your your comments, George, I think were in blue or maybe in red. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, but we've got May 19th. Oh, here, May 19th at 11.36, the red was added or their designee after consulting with the committee. Right, so these are changes we did actually make. So I think um, in committee, thank essentially you. showing. Yes, 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 yes. And I have no um, idea where that is in my computer. Made on May 19th, which might be the last time. All right, so let's let's work with this document. And again, my apologies to my colleagues, but let's work with this document and um, see if, uh, and Mandy, you have track changes obviously uh, set on. So we can make changes to this. Um, Mandy, if you would scroll up to the top, let's just start again. Um, make sure that we're on the same page, the same title. Um, and actually we did make a change as Mandy has mentioned already. Uh, actually, 
Um, so on May 19th, during yeah. the meeting. So let's read that and see um, if, if you can just get my, yeah. I, so can, I, I can yeah. do a view that reads it clear. Thank you. So that's the preamble and the vacancy. And if you could enlarge it just a bit, just a bit, if you could, that's great. Thank you. How the rest of you can read that? Is that okay? Oh, that's even better. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. um, now it doesn't, however, show. <laughs> it doesn't show the changes that. Um, well, this is this is a this is the simple markup for ease of reading, but I can uh, show all the changes. I think we need to see the changes. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be crucial because that's been the issue all along. There were changes made, and I'm not showing them to you. This does. So, yeah. and this may and be. When addresses... I hover, you can see that these were made. May nineteenth. May nineteenth. Exactly. Um, during our meeting. All right, so I think we have the right document now. Um, and if we go back to the preamble, a change was made and this perhaps does address the question that um, both Darcy and Mandy were discussing about the scope of this, of this document. That, that change seems to have been addressing that question. And I'm not saying people agree with it, but that's I think the reason that the change was made. I'm, I'm sure everyone else is doing what I'm doing, which is trying to remember something that happened almost a month ago. Uh, seems like longer than that. So here it is laid out the policy to govern. So this is changed, thank you. To govern how recommendations are made for such appointments. So we'll come back to this, Darcy, but this in fact was something that we did discuss and at the time, you may have changed your mind. Um, we're all trying to remember what we were thinking back then. But at the time, it seems like we were in agreement about that. But we'll come back to it. Um, and this also shows that the second paragraph was to be removed, but it has not been removed yet. And um, no, no other changes were made. So we can go to vacancy. And again, this is ancient history, but for the sake of just reminding ourselves and me, when a vacancy or impending vacancy occurs in a multiple member body appointed by the town council, the chair of the council committee, chair of the council committee responsible for recommending, recommending appointments to the council for that body or the designee after consulting with the committee shall submit to the town clerk, excuse me, submit to the clerk of, of the town council for publication on the town bulletin board. I think the rest of this is straightforward. And then we have the, the, the definition, Darcy, that I think you might have had some concern about and may still do about impending vacancy versus vacancy. An impending vacancy occurs when a member informs the council of their intention to resign or a member's term is expiring regardless of whether that member seeks reappointment. So we distinguish between a vacancy, which is in the previous sentence, and an impending vacancy. All right. Moving on. Yes, unless again, please speak up. Again, I can't see. Actually, I should be able to see now. So let me stop pretending I can't see. I can see hands. So just raise your hand or speak up. Community activity form. Um, it's been noted and will be noted in the report that um, some members um, object to the fact that we do not make these public and that will be noted. I thought, and please help me here if I'm mistaken, that a suggestion was made that I think is a good idea and I don't know what the rest of you think that instead of allowing people who already have a CF, CAF on file not to submit a new CAF, that we actually consider changing the policy and requiring everyone who wishes to be considered for a position, where the, and even if they're thinking of, they're seeking a reappointment, that we require everyone to file a CAF. It only takes a few minutes and it alerts the counselors. I think this was Darcy's point that often people just aren't aware and it's understandable. 
And this would, um, no one would have an excuse. Everyone would know, um, it would be in their mailbox that X, Y, and Z have expressed interest in serving on a, a body that we appoint, uh, as opposed to the current uh, policy, or is it a procedure, <laughs> where um, if you are currently a member of one of these bodies, you don't have to submit a CAF. You just use the old one. I think that's so the, a good suggestion. The current is no one has to if it's three years, if it's less than three years old. And I think that was the discussion we were having was, does right. that get too complicated, messy? Do all the counselors even know who has applied because three years goes back a couple of no. counselors? <laughs> and it would seem that would be solved by simply saying, look, you know, say in the case of Bob Hegner, Bob, you know, if you want to have be reappointed, great, just fill out another CAF. Bob says, but I, you know, I just filled one out two years ago. And I say, Bob, I know, but please fill out another CAF. I mean, I like the idea of speaking as a chair who's had to navigate two of these with massive amounts of appointees or CAF, current CAFs with the three-year term. I really like the idea of limiting it less than three years. I don't know whether it should be going back a couple months, going back to whenever the bulletin board notice for the vacancy or impending vacancy is published. Um, I'm not sure what the, the line should be, but I definitely like a line less than three years old. And why, why less than three? So, for example, um, the ZBA and planning board lists are getting quite long. Right, right. And, and as a chair, I have to reach out to every single one of those, including the ones that were three years ago. Right. Um, and I have to do that every time. Right. Even if four months ago, they said I moved out of town. Even if five months ago, they said, I'm not interested. And then this one comes up here, I have to re-reach out to them. And that is a lot of work for a chair, a mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we limit it, number one, you'd limit the number of people you're reaching out to, you know, sort of the back. If you limit it to once a bulletin board notice is posted, you don't have to reach out except to say, hey, we got it. Great. You'll be hearing from us as we move forward um, versus the continuing to. And if I don't hear back from a person from three years ago, I have to keep sending them every single document, every single communication, even though they're probably never going to respond or be interested. And that adds a lot of time and work. Mm. Um, and so number one, it doesn't seem to be fruitful. And number two, if we're trying to limit the workload of counselors, this is one way to do so that doesn't necessarily limit the pool. Um, it does uh, seem to me that if we were to, uh, get rid of the three-year thing because it does sound a bit overwhelming. Uh, I do think somehow or other, there's gotta be more than the bulletin board notice, um, you know, or, so I, I could see, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I, uh, uh, not having done this as a chair, I, I and I don't, uh, but it does seem to me that it, I don't understand why you have to contact somebody who's moved out of town and you know it and they told you. Because, because the rule says anyone submitted within the past three years needs to be contacted. And we do that because sometimes people change their opinion from one to another, or maybe they moved back in town no. because that cap is still technically an applicant till they don't submit the SOI. I mean, one could take the view that, um, let's say you keep the three-year rule, but, um, and you send out a notice and there's no response. And now you're moving on to the next phase. Um, at that point, it seems not unreasonable for you simply to cease to reach out to people who have not, um, I mean, first of all, they have to submit a new cap. So all you're telling them is, you're sending a message to everybody in the last, you know, say three years, two years, whatever it is, You've previously expressed an interest in this body. Um, there is now a, a bulletin board notice. Um, and if you're interested, please submit a CAF. And so that you could have a boilerplate message and you just, it is a bit of a pain, I know, especially for you because you're dealing with ZBA and planning, which tends to have larger uh, pools, the FinCom does not. Um, 
but it would be a boilerplate message and you'd send it out, you know, as a blast to everybody within a certain time span. We, right now it's three years, it could be shorter. And you would not, and if they don't respond with a CAF, um, you just, you ignore them. Because everybody now has to submit a new CAF. So you use the old CAFs as a way to just sort of do outreach. I mean, that's sort of my understanding is that you already have a group of people that expressed an interest in this body once upon a time, and for whatever reason, they weren't selected or whatever. Um, and so they're like a natural pool for potentially for, you know, finding uh, new members that's just given to you. And all you have to do um, is send them all a blast, which says, you know, hey, this thing you're interested in, we're looking for somebody. If you're interested again, submit a CAF. Can I ask, I, I want to try and clarify what you're saying. Yeah, you're saying yeah. CAFs are kept on file for three years and any time a vacancy or an impending vacancy opens up, anyone that has filed a CAF within the last three years will be contacted right. to and, and requested to submit a CAF specific to that vacancy or impending vacancy. And then only CAFs submitted after the bulletin board notice went up are those that are considered current applicants? That is correct. That's what I'm suggesting. Like right. that would require a complete rewrite of this number too, but I'm okay with that rewrite. And I'm, I think I'm okay with that plan personally. Yeah, well, you know, what do others think? I mean, again, I know, um, I mean, Darcy's a chair, but she, she doesn't have this challenge at the moment, but in the future, any one of you could be a chair. Um, and uh, any thoughts about, uh, on the one hand, using CAPS as a way of, uh, that's the idea I think of the three-year rule is to keep the net as wide as possible, especially with people who have already expressed an interest in a body. Um, but requiring uh, that they submit a new CAF um, if they're interested as a way of A, alerting all counselors as to what the pool is, or at least what the potential pool is, and also um, a way of lessening the burden on the chair who otherwise would have to you know, go the full nine yards for people who almost all of them have absolutely no interest. So that's kind of the logic here. Um, what do people think about that? Other than Mandy and myself. Sarah, please. So that's how we did it in the very beginning um, because when we made our very first recommendations, we did make everyone fill out a new CAF. Yep. So I don't have any issue with that. I think the only thing that came up with OCA when we first started doing it was um, we wanted to make sure that everyone was contacted. Um, we did it, I kept a log, we did it two ways, which I know has been different for every single chair. Um, but say if we wanna keep it to three years or I would even be okay since councils are gonna start changing every two years, if we wanted to go to two years, yeah. I would be fine with that. The thing I would, the only thing I would want to make sure was that whoever was a chair just kept a record that, you know, if people needed to see it, they could, where, you know, you email someone and then I would email them and then I would call them. And I would just usually, you know, I would usually do it twice, which now if you have 20 people, that's a total pain in the neck. Right. Um, but now with practical experience, I'm realizing that I don't know that that will ever happen. Um, I think the only hang up is that people sometimes will say, well, they only called me once or I got an email and it was to the wrong place or I was in Ireland and I didn't get it and there was some rancor there. But I think I think I would even be okay with lowering it to two years. Yeah, yeah. And just we have to keep a record of how we got a hold of people so that if that, that's the only hang up. Okay. So can I give you some idea? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 20 is less than double what I was emailing people for the planning board. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I, I did not call yeah. and I only emailed once. And then if they didn't respond, I continued to contact them. So I had a very large contact list every time. So I'm just wondering if then if it's changed though to, if we lowered it to two years yeah. um, and then um, and I'll be honest, if people told me they moved out of town or if I found out they moved out of town, I did not get a hold right. of them again. So maybe exactly. we can make that rule as well. So, I mean, I'm just saying that that, that might keep the pool large, 
but not make it unmanageable. So that's up to everybody else what they think. And Mandy Joe, you probably have the most experience right now with that. I like the idea of two years. I think that, especially given our terms, I think that makes sense. Now, again, there may be some, maybe Alyssa or others who, you know, thinking of the uh, the town manager handbook and the way things have always been done since time immemorial um, might still insist on three, but I like two. Um, and keeping track of, I mean, I guess for me, if somebody said, you know, what's your record of who you reached out to, I do it strictly by email. Um, at least the last one was done strictly by email. Um, and so there's an email record of everything. So um, I just, I could find their name and I could tell you exactly when and what was, was done. And that will stay, you know, forever. Um, and I try to keep, and I keep all the caps um, in a file. Um, of course, that's gonna get unwieldy over time because if we're, if we're making them submit a new cap every single time. Um, that may be a bit of a headache, but um, yeah. So if we change everything to two years, the question then becomes, yeah. what are the rules for if someone doesn't respond to that initial email that says, hey, we've got a vacancy coming, you submitted a cap in the next two years, um, contact me if you're interested to confirm continued interest. Now I would say, Mandy, that what it would say is, if you are still interested, please submit a new cap. Hmm. So the idea is the new calf, A, triggers, uh, alerts everyone on the council that somebody's interested in that position. And B, tells you that, um, you know, that they're an active candidate. But if they don't submit a calf uh, within the time frame that we've set, then you can just drop them because they know they're not interested and they're not in the pool. So my thought is that requiring a new calf would be evidence of their, renewed, of their continued interest and also alerting counselors um, who pay attention to these things, who currently is in, interested in say planning board or zoning. So we would need to delete this sentence then? Let's see, if an individual including a current member of the body submitted a cap within the past two years, they do not need to submit a cap. Um, yes, I'm suggest, let's just strike it for the moment, but I'm suggesting um, removing that. Um, and I'm actually the next sentence as well. Um, so individuals interested in serving on a multiple member body appointed by the town council uh, shall submit a cap to express their interest in service. So it could be all individuals interested in serving on them, right? Uh, including um, uh, those currently serving, including the current members. So all individuals interested in serving on a multiple member body appointed by the town council um, shall submit a calf to express their interest in service. That's what I'm suggesting for the moment. Please people weigh in with any thoughts. Can I just, oh. Yeah, no, I, I was just gonna say, can I take a minute to try and word everything before we try to do this there and come up with something, but I, I need to know what I'd be trying to write and then I can try and modify the whole thing and then we can go over that. But Sarah? I just was thinking, and I don't know when we talk about policy versus procedure, but do you, should we make it clear for a chair so chairs don't have to guess to say that the chair would reach out to whatever people from the last two years and you want to just put by email? Um, and I don't know if you want to just, I don't know if, if, Yeah, I guess you can't really ask people to say, yeah, they got it. So just that to make it clear that they just need to reach out by email. All right, we need something that, you know. I'm just thinking new new people are gonna come in and there's gonna be new chairs. So I don't know if you wanna just kind of leave it as a record or a guideline for, you know, maybe people 20 years, I don't know. We probably won't even have email in 20 years. Up to you guys. Or they're designated. Yep. I know it's a pain, but. Because I, I think in reality that will never ever happen, but it could. <laughs> I dream of it sometimes. <laughs> Just say, Pat, you have DAB. <laughs> so, um, within 
the past would be the past two years, I think, within the past two years, or within two years prior to. Okay, maybe I think you've got it, Maddie. Prior to the publication of the bulletin board notice to confirm uh, their interest. And then we would strike the next sentence. Right. Let's just put a line through for the moment. When Mandy is done, we're going to ask her to. You need published there. No. Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to figure out where. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. No, that's okay. I just fixed that one. Um... No, you didn't, but that's okay. Oh, yeah, no. So regarding the. Yeah. Do you think that one email is adequate? For um, what, Darcy? I'm sorry. Uh, for notice of the vacancy. Um, I don't I think so. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever received a positive response after multiple emails. Yeah. Yeah, I think one, one is sufficient. I think multiple emails have garnered negative responses that pretty much say, don't email me again, but I'm not sure I've ever received a positive. You emailed me enough, sure, I'll keep going. I'll do it. I give in. I give in. I'll do it. Oh, I'm just, I'm just not, no. I'm no. not saying that people will be convinced by two emails. I'm suggesting that it's possible for people to just miss an email. Sure. And, Sure. Uh, I mean, I, I know that for a fact. <laughs> right. So uh, I I guess I liked the uh, the OCA process when Sarah was doing it because it felt it felt very personal um, that she followed up um, with phone calls. I think that Darcy is getting into the weeds. I hear you. I think it is a very nice touch, but I think each chair or their designee is going to have to. I mean, as long as they're following the basic policy, um, I think we're, that's getting a bit into the weeds. Um, and also, is it amount of work that some chairs or the designees might resent? They might say, "Why are you forcing me to do this?" Um, and so, um, yeah. So Mandy, if you're able to, well, maybe not, um, just show us what this would look like yep. as, a clean, as a clean text and we can read it and see where we stand. Um, thank you. So I'm gonna read this out loud if people can bear and speak up if you have a problem. Individuals interested in serving on a multiple member body appointed by the town council shall submit a CAF to express their interest in service. The chair of the recommending committee or the designees shall reach out by email at a minimum. Oh, that never mind. Let me delete that. Doesn't work there. Okay, it's all right. To all individuals who submitted CFs within the two years prior to the publication of the bulletin board notice, comma, as well as to, is that right? As well as to any member of the committee whose term is expiring. I think that's right to confirm their interest, okay? Only those individuals who respond to the chair's email, but I would just say only those individuals who submit a CAF. So let's say Bob Hegner emails me and says, yeah, George, I'm interested. 
I don't think that that would not be sufficient because um, the other counselors would not know unless he submits a new CAF. So I would say only those individuals who submit a CAF after the bulletin board notice is published, my suggestion, shall continue, um, shall be considered, I would just say shall be considered part of the pool. Let's see if that, what do you guys think? You should probably also say board or committee. Yeah, no, that, that's true. Member um, of the board or committee whose term is expiring. Yeah. Um, who know, yeah. So I added a couple things. So as well as to any member of the board or committee whose term is expiring, to confirm their interest and indicate the requirement to submit a new CAF. Oh, only okay. Individuals yeah. who respond to the chair's email or who only those individuals who submit a CAF after the bulletin board notice is published shall be considered part of the applicant pool going forward. Yeah, that I like, but I'm worried about. So the chair of the recommending committee of Disney shall reach out by email to all individuals to submit a cap within two years prior to publication of the bulletin board notice, as well as any member of the board of committee whose term is expiring to confirm their interest and indicate the requirement to submit a new CAF. Good. Only or those notify them of the requirement. Okay. And, and notify them. Them of the requirement to submit a new cap to be... Well, this applies only to that subset, which is going to be very small, of people who um, are currently serving. So no, um, it applies to all of them because I added that comma. Okay. All right. Okay. Right, because you wanted you wanted everyone, even those that submitted the last two a calf in the last two years, to submit a new one. That is correct. That is correct. You're right. That's what I'm suggesting. So it is. You're right. It isn't just the current members who are seeking reappointment. It's anyone. Thank you. Only those individuals who submit a CAF after the bulletin board notice is published shall be considered part of the applicant pool going forward. So if someone who is currently a member who wants to be reappointed forgets or neglects to submit their CAF, they are no longer a member of the pool. And anyone from the, the past two years who does not will no longer have to be contacted by the chair. They're considered essentially not part of the pool. I think the rest is, is what we already had. Um, CAFs for multiple member bodies appointed by the town council are separate from the CAFs for town manager appointed multiple member bodies and are automatically electronically distributed to all councilors immediately. The chairs of the recommended committees or the designees shall reach out to each applicant upon receipt of their CAF to confirm receipt and inform them of the current status of appointments to that body. CAFs are personal records not uh, personnel records, not public documents, and therefore cannot be shared or distributed by counselors. And of course, you know, I object to that yes. last. Yes, time. yes, yes, Darcy. So in the report, um, I will mention that one member objected to, or objects to the idea that they're not um, public records. They're not shared. No, I object to. Oh, so so uh, Pat. Seriously, uh, I think that no, they no, should no, be that's public. Fine. Yeah. Okay. I think they should be public documents. So both. So two members. Uh, normally, I do not um, give names. I just say, but two. Yeah, members. that's fine. That's fine. fine. Okay. All right. Okay. We on to sufficiency. I hope so. I'll move back to tract. I'll be back okay. in thirty seconds. <clears throat> Go ahead. I will be here. I. Unless I make it smaller, I can't fit it all on the page. Let's see if I can. There we go. All right. All right, this is difficult. It's not, it's not so much the size of the text, it's just <laughs> It's not like yeah, I, I can I can again go to just simple markup for people to read initially and then thank you. That, that would help me. Helpful. That would help me. And we can come back if we have and to. then we can come back and see what was changed or what wasn't. Thank I you. don't remember whether this is one we got to. Okay. Um 
So after the notice of vacancy or impending vacancy has been published for not less than 14 days on the town bulletin board pursuant to charter section 912E, the recommending committee may assess the sufficiency of the opt-in pool. The recommending committee chair or the designee shall collect all CAFs submitted over the preceding, that should be two years now. Well, I think, it? no, what? I think. What? All CAFs submitted since the bulletin board notice was published. That's right. Since the public, we could say since the publication of the bulletin board notice, good, that's fine, <laughs> right? And I think that next sentence no longer needs is needed. And maybe the next one as well. So it could be the applicant pool um, shall be all residents. So who, do we, yeah. Are we deleting this sentence that's highlighted? The recommending committee chair of Disney shall collect all CAFs submitted since the publication of the bulletin board notice. Why well, we'll keep it in for now. All CAFs who submitted CAFs since the public of the bulletin. So yeah, let's look at that for a moment. Is, is it, what's it saying? It's essentially saying that the chair obviously needs to collect all active CAFs and active CAFs are, i.e. The, the applicant pool, are all residents who have submitted CAFs since the publication of Wilton Board Notice. Good. And then we have the next bit is, you know, in, in, in making a determination regarding the sufficiency of the applicant pool, the recommended committee shall consider the following factors. Okay. Again, many of the, this is the OCA language, the number of applicants relative to the number of vacancies or impending vacancies, the council strives for more applicants and vacancies. I think that's fine. The demographic diversity of the applicant pool, the council strives for diverse applicant pool, including racial, economic, gender, and generational diversity. And finally, the current needs of the body to be appointed, including any current burdens placed on the body by a vacancy. I'm happy with that language. Anyone have a concerns, objections? We got two more paragraphs, Paul. Uh, Paul, George. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting a salary, but I don't want to. Do any, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to, have to do any of his work. So I'm just surprised he gets the salary he gets. The town council, and therefore the. Comment, George. Please, Darcy, go ahead. Um. I've always had a little trouble with the sentence, the council strives for more applicants than vacancies. Yeah. Because if we, you know, if we have, um, if we have an opening and we have, if we have one opening and we have one like qualified applicant, I, not sure, I'm yeah. not sure it makes sense to say, no, we're, we can't move on that, but, um, I, I don't know what it means that we strive for, you know. Well, I strive to be a decent and compassionate human being, <laughs> but I often fall short. So I think that's, you know, so I think Darcy, you're absolutely right. There are cases we know of where, you know, you have a perfectly qualified candidate um, and people have not responded and in spite of all our best efforts. And then I think it's a decision for the committee and I think they're perfectly free to having acknowledged that, just put that one person forward. And of course, it's possible at the council level, counselors could object and say, no, we want you to go back and find more people. But I think this is just sort of advice, which is we strive, and I think you would agree, we do strive to have more, um, you know, so when we, with DAB, you know, you know, we could have said, okay, we've got, you know, nine applicants, <laughs> we'll stop. But we did feel that that's not adequate. And so we kept pushing and pushing until we got 18. Um, so I think it's OK. The striving is aspirational, and, but doesn't eliminate or doesn't rule out what you're suggesting. Um, so I think, I, yeah. Anyone else? Committees have generally 
done that because yeah. as with CAB, we got more than we didn't and we didn't stop the process. We said, we're still good. Same with ZBA, you know, at one point we got something and we did say that's not sufficient. We went back, but then we said, no, we need to because even if we don't like that we don't have a lot of choice, the current needs of the body trump that. And we absolutely must continue. And there's still qualified applicants and it doesn't take away from that, but it's just that weighing. So I, I think it's worded well enough. Yeah. Does people wanna see the truly marked up version? I don't, but anyone else want to? Would you like to see that Darcy just to see? Oh. Okay, that's all right. Okay. Oh, what it what it said in the past? Yeah, what be, yeah, marked up. Um sure. Okay, let's look at the marked up version for a moment. Cover your eyes. I, I get slightly I, nauseous. <laughs> I'm not sure this one's changed much other than become more efficient. All right. It's all right. I just you know, looking at of, it now. I get vertigo when I see this. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. There were no changes made to this particular section. Um, yeah. The other this stuff above that we, that we just went through that. So. Um, but there were changes made to the next section, so maybe we should keep this up for a moment just so everyone can see it. Um, uh, the town council and therefore the recommending committee assesses the applicant pool holistically in the context of the needs and history of the body to be appointed. The recommending committee shall by majority vote declare the applicant pool sufficient to proceed to interviews. Before or after this declaration, the council or the recommending committee may continue to engage in outreach to recruit additional applicants. Thoughts on that? So the only thing I have is since this was written, there's now a statement of interest portion and it goes more to the second paragraph prior to the posting of interviews. I think when we get through these next couple of sections, we need to be very clear when the applicant pool closes. Is it the posting of the agenda seven days before the interviews that has the names? Is it a random deadline before that? What? When are we not accepting any more CAFs? When are we not accepting any more SOIs and all of that? Right. Um, and to be careful as we go through, so we might not be able to do it here. So. And, and for this one, when do we disclose the number of applicants? Is it the posting of the interview names that the applicant pool is, the number is done or at the time we declare it sufficient? That, because in some sense, I think it might be nice to say, you know, we're declaring this sufficient because we think there are X number of applicants without disclosing names. You know, it all depends on whether the SOIs have been submitted. But maybe it would be nice to be able to actually talk to members at the meeting we're doing the applicant pool, even if we're not talking names. Mm -hmm. No. Hmm. Oh. Ouch. Um, so many of your thoughts will come back to this a little bit later when we get to SOIs, but we might have to make some changes here. All right. It's all right. It's all right. And particularly to that last paragraph, when is it appropriate to disclose the number of applicants or potential applicants? Uh, I'm just trying, I'm thinking out loud here. Um, when we declare the sufficiency of the pool, um, we don't, at least in the past, I have not said we got X number of applicants. We just declare it's sufficient. Um, and then we go to SOIs. Um, and it's at that point, once we get the SOIs back, that we can say in good conscience that we have you know, X number of active candidates. So I'm not, a, I just, again, thinking on top of my head, I'm not all that concerned about numbers up until we actually have the SOIs and we can say with, with confidence, this is the number of people currently active candidates. 
um, but others may disagree. They may feel like it's important to know how many applicants we have uh, earlier because the, well, I guess you could say encourage more people to apply. I mean, depending on when the deadline is. Um, well, the committee knows, right? The committee knows, but do we want to make it public? Do we want to say, and that basically means to the council. I mean, I certainly made it public to the council, the number of applicants for DAB. I mean, I didn't hide that. And, and there was no reason to hide it because we're trying to get people to apply. Um, and um, so with any, I think the same with zoning board and perhaps plan, ZDA and planning board, um, when you have a shortage of candidates, you want to make it clear to people that we need more candidates that we're, you know, um, but. I just feel like yep. when we had discussions about whether the applicant pool is sufficient to not be able to actually say, hey, we're staring at, you know, four active applicants or potential applicants, those that have expressed interest and we have six spots open, to not be able to actually say that in a meeting, right. the so, conversation gets stilted. So, so right. go ahead, Darcy. Knowing what would be the reason for not sharing that information? I understand not sharing names, but I, I'm, I'm beginning to not understand why we can't actually disclose that we think we've got up to 20 DAB applicants. Might not be the case when SOIs are finally done and submitted, but right. we're basing our decision because then you, you, so here's what happens is we based our decision on a potential 18, 20, whatever the number was, but in the end, only nine SOIs were published and people start looking at those two and go, well, did they really base it on just nine? Right. Could we just remove this sentence? That's what I'm wondering. I'd support that. Well, I mean, I guess the question, why do we have this sentence? What was the reasoning? Um, I think, um, <sighs> certainly with the bodies we're dealing with, um, and given our previous statements above, we are trying to um, create a, a, as diverse and broad a pool as possible so we can choose the best possible candidates. Um, so why should we, you know, we do want to know, I think, the, you know, if we're having trouble getting applicants. Um, yeah. Anyone have further thoughts? I just, I'm not recalling now why we thought this was important. Um, it's like we have agreement on it. Well, I think for the moment we do, Darcy. Um, again, maybe someone on the council, maybe Evan, um, perhaps will we'll, we'll refresh our memory. I, this might be something he uh, felt strongly about. And I, I just can't, it, no, I'm serious. I mean, I just no, can't recall what the concern was. I think the concern was not the, we don't have enough, but the, you know, hypothetically say we had gotten 50 applications for the DAB and we yeah. disclosed that it would discourage others. Oh yeah, right, right, I think right, it was the right. other end. Although I think over our last three years, we've found that's generally not yeah. an issue. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think we will, well, let's suggest, we're, we're suggesting striking it. And um, if Evan observes it and it concerns, he can raise that at council. But I think, um, I think we're agreed. Selection guidance. Now, um, I have felt, and I'm not sure you all agree, that this language essentially, not in complete detail, but in essence, has already been expressed above. Um, and so I felt it could be removed. It's basically just copied from the appointed committee handbook. And um, so I felt this language had already been articulated above under, um, uh, what was the, I don't remember anymore. What, what was number three? <laughs> anyway. Applicant pool. The applicant pool. Um, I think so, it's also expressed under criteria for a healthy multiple member body, some of yes, it. Yes, exactly, right. So it, uh, so we're not going to remove it yet because people may want to consult it and feel like maybe there's something specific in this that should be articulated elsewhere. But I felt that it could be removed. 
So prior to soliciting statements of interest, developing interview questions, or holding interviews, the recommending committee shall, by majority vote, adopt selection guidance for filling the vacancy and shall provide that document to the full town council and all known applicants prior to the deadline for submitting statements of interest. Um, I think the rest of this is fine. For each multiple member body, the recommending committee may create a standard reference list and it's may create, not shall. And that's something people should note because um, I think the committee should be given some leeway here, but you may not agree. Um, may create a standard reference list of the skills and characteristics of a successful member of that body and the knowledge and or expertise related to the work of that body. While acknowledging that each multiple member body will have its own unique selection guidance. Selection guidance overall should be based upon the following considerations. Okay, so far so good. And this again is, is pretty much straight from OCA, as I recall, except for number three, I think we made a slight change. But the council considers the following factors to be important for a multiple member body to be healthy. A strong base of seasoned members who have completed or nearly completed at least one term as a member. These members bring an understanding of process, knowledge, and can mentor new members and take on leash fine. Newer members who have served less than one term. These members bring new energy, outlook, and ideas to the body and ensure the body will continue to have a strong base of seasoned members in the future. And then three, members who reflect the diversity good of the town's residents, for example, in age, gender, race, income, residents, et cetera, and are broadly representative of the town. Good, this, in fact, thank you. <laughs> in my document that we were looking at earlier, um, I thought we should have changed, we did change it. <laughs> so, well, I think good. these are, might be some of my, I'm not sure we got to this last time. These might be okay. some of my questions. Well, I, I think that was, yeah, yeah. this one's okay. a, blue is my suggestions. Okay, all right. So, ahead, did, does it mirror the uh, criteria above in the? Let's look. Let's look. Yeah, I think that if we go up, race, and, income residents up above. Right here, it's just it's the stricken. It's the stricken. I think Darcy's thinking you're referring to oh, this one. Committee Eight handbook. Gender, race, experience, income, place of residence. So we could add experience in. Right. Thought, yeah. Are we going to mirror what's up above racial, economic, gender? Yeah, because right, that one's right. right here. Race, economic, gender, generational. Right. We just have to pick the language. And I think this is fine. Uh, I mean, it, again, race, gender, um, age, I think. That's generational, fine. but yeah, right. I feel like we should just copy this group here. You want to take that group and insert it up above? Okay, so keeping the same language for the sake of consistency would be good, as long as people feel it, it covers the basis. Does that so work? Eight, yeah. Now, um, rental versus homeowner is, is very clear. Residence is a little bit vague. And I, I'm not saying we need to change it, but do people feel that that's clear enough that that say in, in you know another group reading this, another council is, you know would say, you know what do they mean by residence? Um, so I actually take two things out of that. Yeah. It it could base be based on income rental versus owner, but I also take that to mean residence within the town location in the town. So we don't want an entire committee potentially. From one neighborhood. From one yeah. small area of town. Right. right. We want them to be living throughout town. So taking the word literally as where you reside. Yeah. Right. And income would include rental. How do people feel about that? Do they feel that's clear enough or do they want renters included? Renters versus homeowners. I know Evan has been a strong advocate. I would advocate like to add renters. Yeah, I, I think Evan has been a strong advocate for this. And considering a large number of renters that live in this town, I think that's something that, and, um, that we'd like to 
I agree and with Pat. renters also are a diverse group. It isn't just students who are renters. So exactly, that's yeah. right. Yeah. But um, is that a well, good way to word it? Let's see. So members who reflect the diversity of the town's residents, for example, in age, gender, race, income, home ownership slash rental status, residents, etc. And then again, you would you would so, copy that now. Okay. And then input from bodies chair. Uh, I'm a little. Um, Find the language a little clunky still. Well, I, I'm well. Yeah. Were we talking about ownership or rental status, residence, and then we're talking about residence? And I, I heard that part of the thing, but I'm. We're really talking about diversity of residence or diversity of loca Yeah, location of residence. That would be fine, because that's what we're talking about. We want people right. spread out right. Right. from right. all over town. Right. That makes sense. Yes, it does. And with the value of a document like this and the value of what we're doing is that it reminds us, including yours truly, of these factors that can often get lost in the shuffle. It reminds us that you know, we need to be considering these things. So this kind of specificity is helpful. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any hands, but please speak up or raise your hand. I'm going to go to B, input from body's chair. Prior to the adoption of selection guidance, the chair of the recommending committee or the designee or designee shall solicit from the chair of the body that has vacancies, any preferred knowledge and or expertise to meet the current needs of the body, of that body. So one thing that's been deleted from this section. Yep that might be wise to delete, um, given some recent experience, is that that input is copied verbatim into the adopted selection guidance. Uh, so you, you're a little concerned about um, the uh, chair or the designee, it would be the chair almost certainly, um, sort of rewording or rephrasing well, so so or based on a it could be based on a phone call. It could be based, you know, I, I call up uh, the chair of, yeah. of, of FinCom and say, you know, tell me what what's what's going on. Um, is that what we're is that? So so we ran into some issues as a committee at CRC with the input that was provided um, being sometimes too specific or being right. off not of, appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. not appropriate in terms of what was what this document would be used for and right. so um as and and so i i don't know what the solution is because you don't necessarily want to give the chair the ability to censor the stuff before the rest of the committee has seen it right but um it was also very awkward as chair to put some of the stuff that ultimately the committee removed into the draft document <laughs> um and so right. i don't yeah. know what a good solution is um, on that. That this this statement does not mandate that you need to Either put way, anything right. in writing. You 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 know it doesn't say and you shall include this verbatim in the selection guidance. It just says you shall reach out to the chair and solicit from the chair um, any preferred knowledge or expertise to meet the current needs. And you know whether it's an email or a letter um, or you know inscribed in stone, whatever it is, what you get from them. You would then share that with your colleagues to read or discuss, but it doesn't have to. Uh, so I'm saying um, I would not put that in, actually. Would you I, put this this in? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I would I would just leave it the way it is. It 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 leaves it completely up to you as chair what you do with this information. If you want to put it in verbatim because the committee agrees this is exactly this is exactly what we want. Boom. If you look at it and go, this is useless. I mean, so we got some, I mean, past experience, we got a long list of like 14 things. And we thought most of this is pointless. 
So we didn't include it. We just ignored it. Can I just so I say think, we shouldn't solicit uh, anything from the chair? Only no, what? because yeah. what if, so if that's in there and yeah. then the public has no idea what the chair said and there's some question, you know, about who was selected, right? And it right. comes out later. Like one time we said, the chair said, I don't want any professors. No. Like, I, no. I just think that would leave the council up to leave us open to some, I don't know, rancor and criticism, not that we always take that into account, but I, mm -hmm. I just think if, if we're going to not make public what a chair says, right, then I don't think we should solicit it. I think it's got to be one way or the other. Yeah. And the chair would either have to take, you know, then the chair would have to take ownership of something they said that might not be, as long as we tell them, look, we we're writing it down or we have to mm -hmm. make it public that this is a guidance and I would just do it one way or the other. I guess I, yeah, I hear you, Sarah. I guess I have trouble with the idea that we're appointing me a member or members to a committee and we're not actually talking to the chair of that committee about how things are going and what's going on. I mean, that it just we that seems crazy. Chair, whatever they say, then that you need, when the chair talk, when someone from whatever selection committee contacts the chair, the first thing they need to say is, I am going to just so you know, whatever you tell me for mm -hmm. election guidance, I have to mm -hmm. make right. public, at, you know, at least during the minutes or to my committee. So if there's anything that you feel like you don't want to say to the entire world or to my committee, then mm -hmm. you need to think of that. I would just make sure that that's a disclaimer. I just okay. think you can have it both ways. Okay. So we could yeah. say to be included in the draft selection guidance presented to the recommending committee. Recommending committee. So it's a public record. The person, uh, the chair would have been notified that it's going to be a public record, but it still leaves it up to the committee to decide when it finally publishes or creates its selection guidance, what to include and what not to include. Okay, how do uh, people feel about that? Yeah, Darcy? Can I just have something? Um, it seems like we're, all, we're earlier saying that we're going to have standard, a stand, well, that the committee may create a standard reference list of skills and char characteristics for a successful member of that body, uh -huh. which I'm hoping does happen because it's kind of, ridiculous to repeat it over and over but anyway I this only says that you're soliciting the preferred knowledge or expertise to meet current needs meaning to me that means you know planning board we need uh, an architect you know, right, we right, right. you know all of our architects are gone or we need a planner we need whatever it really um, yeah 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 not not subjective right right uh, right, objective right of like right, what right. you need to balance out the committee right 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 and in a way it seems it only does really apply to uh planning board uh, maybe i mean zba, ZBA. You think so? I mean, they would say we need an architect, we need a lawyer, we need a. Lawyer. Oh yeah, the ZBA okay. selection guidance this year was very helpful um, for uh, okay. discussion and all. All right, all right. ZBA makes similar decisions that planning board does when reviewing. Right, 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 right. That is correct. So good for those two bodies, and it's very specific, and it would be included in the draft selection guidance. Okay. I like this. We ready to move on? I am. All right, now things get a little interesting. This is reappointments. Um, and I think we've gone through this in various versions. Um, and um, I think everyone's on the same page. So I, I will say the um, blue is me, so it probably hasn't been discussed. Ah, okay. Well, let's let's take a closer look then. Generally, if a member of a multiple member body appointed by the town council is seeking reappointment, 
they're given preference in appointment for up to six years of total consecutive service. Now you introduced the word total, um, which is okay, I guess, but I, yeah, it's a total consecutive service. Uh, do you, because the key idea here, excuse me, I guess it, is just consecutive. Right? Consecutive. I think we can take out total, I think. That's fine. Okay. Um, to take advantage of the experience and expertise gained and to honor the voluntary time commitment member of members. If a member has served six consecutive years or will have served more than six consecutive years if reappointed, and there are other qualified applicants, preference will be given to a, to, I'm sorry, other applicants. In cases where special training or expertise is required, longer periods of service may be appropriate. Uh, now here, I think it's some additional language. Yes. The t yeah, let's look closely. The town council will treat every opening, whether a seat is held by a current member who seeks a reappointment or not, as a vacant position. Residents seeking reappointment will have their current service and experience on the body considered as part of the process for making a recommendation to the council. So that's the new language I added. And I'll just say it came directly from the CRC adopted guidance. Much of the rest of the language came from other committees adopted guidance. So I felt it was inappropriate to leave out the difference that CRC was at least as we discuss. And let people ponder that for a minute. I guess I think, it, I mean, again, I'm sorry, I'm just going to speak up, but um, at least the second sentence seems to simply repeat what we've already said. Um, what we've it? already well, I think, I mean, I, maybe I could very well be wrong, but I'm thinking that up above what we've said essentially is that, you know, preference means essentially acknowledging and taking seriously current service and experience on the body. That's what I take preference to mean. So, and that's would, what it's, yeah, to honor voluntary commitment of members and experience and expertise gained. I think, to my reading, this sort of restates that. I think we need to reinstate it, to, to be honest. I think, I think we, I actually like the wording. Uh, sometimes redundancy isn't a bad thing when you're, when you're covering um, a subject very specifically. I sometimes I think it bears repeating because if mm. a new committee is going through or somebody's looking like, oh, I don't know, what do I do as far as reappointments go? Someone may just specifically read this or in the case of someone being critical, I feel like they might say, well, I didn't see it under reappointment. So in that case, sometimes I think a little redundancy is all right. So you do, Sarah, believe that um what this second sentence says is essentially repeating for the sake of emphasis, what we already said above, which is that um, you are given a preference to take advantage of experience and expertise gained and to honor the voluntary time commitment. So this, uh, you feel repeating it again is, is worth, but it's not adding anything new, um, it's re restating or reaffirming um, the idea that um, your service and experience will be considered. Um, that strikes me as just a tad weaker than preference. Actually. Mandy Joe Mandy jo has her hand up. Please, Mandy. So I would say a couple of things. Yeah. Um, I also recommended getting rid of the highlighted above as long as the member is an active contributing yeah, member of the right, board right. committee. That is considering service and experience, right? That's a statement mm -hmm. that we we talked about a lot and right. but is is hard to gauge. Whereas so my my when someone reads the sentence residents seeking reappointment will have their current service and experience of the body considered as part of the process, to me I read that as good and bad. Like right. Just because you served two years or three years doesn't mean you actually have experience and expertise gained. And yeah. we're going to consider whether you right. do have that expertise and experience gained because it's entirely possible they don't, right? right, right, um, right, right. And, and in the latest um, interviews for 
for planning board, ZBA and finance, I believe yeah. members of the committees all commented on how those seeking reappointments really were able to show through their answers to questions, the experience that they did gain um, right. Right. to show that they had learned stuff and done that right. and that that was right. a very, very positive. Yeah. Um, and so I think this sentence can go either way actually and can hurt someone to take away from the preference mm -hmm. that might be given from the sentence above. So I think it, it I think it's valuable to have in okay. there. So you feel it actually adds a little bit, not just repeats, but adds a little bit and gives and works both ways and reinforces as Sarah's saying that a point we've already made as well. Um, good, because I can imagine a situation where you're looking at somebody say on FinCom and you're doing the interview and when you're done with the interview, you look at each other and you think, wow, you know, what, what did this person learn in the last two years? Um, and at that point, you might consider that a relevant factor in uh, good. Okay. Okay. Darcy had her hand up. Please, Darcy, go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, my, my reading of it initially was that it's, you know, it's in there to um, to uh, to we weaken the preference um, and I don't I don't know I I feel like it can go either way but it's obviously could be used to weaken the preference so um, I you know. I think it's a little redundant, but I, and I probably would leave it out, but uh, whatever. It, it puts pressure on, on uh, reappointment, people up for reappointment um, to, yeah, right. to go through a grueling process in order to get reappointed when they've just put in two years of hard work of volunteering on a committee. I'm not sure that's fair, but. Um, but we're making them go through the process either way. Right. They're gonna have to do the interviews. They're gonna have to submit an SOI. They're gonna have to do everything. And, you know, it, it just puts them on notice and puts everyone on notice that we take these appointments very seriously. And, um, and we assume that they do as well. And I think in most cases, that's true. But there could be a case or cases where it's not true. And, and this, I think, I'm uh, beginning to see the merit of this is, is saying, you know, uh, to everyone, uh, your current service and experience are something we take into consideration for a reappointment. So. The last sentence comes right from the uh, committee handbook. And um, I think it's important that everyone understand that um, no one is under any obligation to seek reappointment and the council is under no obligation to offer it. And I did add the word seek or before accept. And then just clarifying. I added the to a resident seeking it at the end too. I just thought it was slightly more clarifying. Good, all right. Statement of interest? Please. So the blue again is yeah. just my edit. Right. I have right. one question. This is the first time we talk about a committee handout at all. all right. So it kind of right. comes out of nowhere <laughs> right. with no right. indication as to where it comes from initially, who's in charge of it, what happens. <laughs> um, right. Do right. they even exist? Um, they, well, do. <laughs> they do. But, but it's, it's really created by the committee. So you know we can't force them to create one, but there's one for FinCom. There's one for planning board and there's one for ZBA. So the planning board and ZBA ones, I don't believe were created by the committee. I went and updated them this year and received guidance from the planning staff. And no, they I didn't pla no planning staff created them. it, right. But it's but what they- But they were out of date. Yeah. 
and but there's there's no indication anywhere whose job is it. So aren't those the ones that we that Oka had and we they're in our packet? And so you could put that they were updated, but I think it's really important to send them out, you know, if you want people to acknowledge. So if you want to put like they're updated or, you know, that the chair will update, I don't know, yearly or every other year with a member of staff, that's fine. Um, and then it would just maybe be updated in the, you know, whatever doc living document that we have you know, that new one will be in there because they're, they're yeah. all in this. They're all in the OCA report. So I would like to keep them in a report. I think that's but helpful. I absolutely agree. We need the handouts. They've been very useful for planning board and ZBA members. Yeah. It's just, yeah. there was no reference until here about it. And so I actually think we might want to add a section somewhere oh. early in this document that but says- in The table of contents. So do you want to just put in, you know, I think it's, you know, clearly a copy of the committee handout. Um, I think we need to identify what it is and where they can be found. ZBAs and planning boards are on pages now on the town website. Right, right. But that, that again is in the weeds, I think. The point well, is that the point of this is simply to say, look, when you, the chair or designee, take this next step, you send this, this, and this. And you know, who knows where it actually exists? Who knows what version it's in? All right, I don't think that really matters. It's just, they're, 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 I assume there exists a committee handout. I think it matters because this should be a living document. This is a well, living document that we are leaving just like a, any other committee handbook to other right. members of councils. Mm -hmm. and so I think it's extraordinarily important but, but we don't we don't create the committee handout. We're not responsible Open for did it. did create the committee handout. Well, that's that was that's perhaps the thing. inappropriate. Yes, we did. Them, so they are really the council's handouts, which is why I think we need a separate paragraph talking about them. And I'm willing to draft ah, that. Okay. Um, so you're saying for FinCom, CBA, and planning, since we make the appointments, we are responsible for creating the committee handout. And even though in the past, the FinCom, for instance, committee handout came from the old finance committee and the planning and ZBA handouts came from I'm the I'm not planning sure staff. there were handouts in the past. I think this uh, was done to aid the councils and help the applicants to the council. I don't think there were handouts in the no. past, George. No, surely, surely when people applied to those committees, the planning board or somebody sent them no. a, a handout. No. That, I'm pretty no. sure that OCA did it. I'm pretty sure that OCA did it. Yeah, no. OCA did. But before OCA, back in the old days, in, in, you know, before the Civil War. <laughs> nope. Um, I, so no. if, you, if you applied to, to planning board, you, you just uh, showed up for an interview uh, and, and just without any handout saying yes. when you meet, what you do? Yes. When, yep. I, when I was appointed to FinCom, I didn't get anything that said, just here. I was just brought in and I was, things were explained to me. Okay. So I agree with you that that's not appropriate and that there should, be, and clearly there must be because we have a reference chair. Um, but my feeling is sort of like, you know, so somebody's going to have to go find the committee handout. Um, and I don't really want to get into the weeds. link to them and, and indicate that once a year, the chair of the recommending committee should ensure that the handout is up to date. Plus, it should just be, we. this should be a document yeah. that is a living document that is what part of the charter or part of what, this is why we're doing it. So right. that we have a living document, so you don't have to be like, well, I don't know. It's yeah, <laughs> right? right. That's why you right. remember when at the very end we had a whole table of contents and we had every single thing cited and where you could look up and where you could find these things. I think it's incredibly okay. right. No, absolutely. So that it should be a, uh, it should be included in this ultimately, or a link to it should be included, and maybe a sentence to the effect that the the, the recommending committee chair should. Uh, Make sure it's I, I recommend or? just adding, we'll change all these numbers, but adding something right after bulletin board notice or right before bulletin board notice. I don't know what numbers we've got that just says committee handout, just like we have statement of interest title, right? Committee handout um, or 
<sighs> with like two sentences, and I can draft. Uh, it. I go, know. Mandy, oh. draft it. No, well, no, no, George, I'm saying, up to it right I'm now. The chair, you guys are I'm the chair, and I forbid her. I forbid her. Um, <laughs> and then the appendix or whatever can link to the current ones uh, on the website. I know when Athena updated the ZBA and the planning board ones, we tried really hard not to change the link. All right. Um, all right, all right, I'm giving up. Re-update the document so that the links stayed the same. Right, right. So Amanda, and, and it sounds like everyone else is suggesting is a separate item, uh, number, whatever, five, six, seven, this is titled committee handout and um, some language to the effect that um, a committee handout, uh, I don't know, right? So here it just needs to be committee. When handout. we go back up to the yeah. preamble, I'll draft something because it'll go up there. Not as a separate item, which uh, like a six or a seven or an eight. In other well, words, I feel like it should be well before we talk about applicant pool, but I guess not. I, I, well, where it goes, I'm not so much worried about. I guess the question here is do people feel it needs a separate entry? Because um, that's what I'm hearing. And it won't be very long, and it will have a link to you know, a table of contents or to the current you know, that version of it. Um, and what's it going to say? It's going to say, um, uh, what's it going to say? It's going to say that there must be a committee handout and it needs to be updated by the chair on, you know, every year. This isn't okay. new. This was, we had this right. with OCA. The only thing that's new with this is that Mandy Joe is suggesting that the chair of the committee yearly, or it could be by yearly, um, take a look at it and see if it still seems up to date or checks in with a staff member to make sure that it's up to date. But this isn't, this isn't new. This is, right, right, this is right. part but of it's the- just, It's just not in this document and it's the first time I've heard about it. So that's all right. I just, I was dreaming we could get through this today. Well, I mean, all it's right. not hard. It was in the OCA document. So even if somebody wants to just go back and just see where it fit in, I mean, it, it was there. Okay, all right, fair enough. And Mandy is, as we speak, she is uh, writing up something that may, may do the trick but the OCA document can also be consulted. So these, um, hand, these handouts were so that they were given to people ahead of the interview so that when we asked them, we, we would ask them, have you read it? Right. Do you know what the obligations are? This was a way for the committee to know that the person actually serious, yeah. knew what it was entailed, how many hours, what night they met. That's why we had it. So each multiple member body that the town council appoints members to shall have a committee handout. The chair of the recommending committee shall at minimum uh, of once a year ensure that the committee handout for the appropriate board of committee is updated, accurate, and can be found on the town website. Okay. I think we have those in the appendix already, right? The OCA. Yeah, yeah, yeah we do. Yeah, but the OCA do. ones, at least for ZBA and planning board, are now up, up are out of date. They've been right. up. Can Can I just ask though? Are, is it still in part of the procedure that the chair send them, email them, or because originally in OCA, when the chair was bef when the chair let someone know that they were going to have an interview, they were emailed. And then they were also given to the each person when they came for doing in person. Um, they were also provided to them again when they came in for the in person interview. So I don't know if that's just been lost or if it's. And honestly, I don't know because I haven't done it. So they are now distributed at the time. Well, it's for the states and under statement of interest, right, right here. Right. So at that point, the chair sends out. Um, the, the deadline for, tells them this is the deadline for submission, gives them the submission guidelines, which are below, sends them a copy of the committee handout and the adopted section guidance, which we all have been doing, um, but this sort of codifies it. And up above, what you all are suggesting, and Mandy has written, is a clarification of the term that we've never used before. And, and for, so it just says what a multiple, what a handout is. And that says the chair needs to, to keep track of it. Okay. Yeah, so so when soliciting the statement of interest, they have to include this selection guidance in the committee handout, right. along with whatever's outlined below. Right, 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 right. Okay. 
And it's 1229 and I have a hard stop. Okay, I hear you, that's appropriate. Um, I think despite my best uh, intentions, we're getting, I think we're making real progress. Um, I appreciate the hard work you're all making. I appreciate Mandy getting us the right document and I'll make sure that this document is preserved. And But I think unless people object, we could either continue with the four of us or I think maybe perhaps appropriately given the nature of this particular task, we want everybody to be present if at all possible that we leave the rest of this for next time. It also would give people a chance to look over what we've done. Um, I can say, give you a preview of coming attractions. Um, as you know, fin we do FinCom interviews differently than everybody else. And so I'm going to be resisting um, some of the sort of more specific details. I agree there should be an interview, but I'm going to be resistant to sort of, you know, questions in advance and that sort of thing. But we'll talk about that next time. Um, and also um, the idea of special meetings. Um, again, we tend with FinCom to do the uh, recommendation right after interviews, and I don't see any problem with that, but I can understand that other committees do it differently. So I guess people should just think about that, whether they really want to have a special meeting. Um, do they want to have questions written out in advance? Um, we'll leave that for next time. Can, just Go ahead. To clear stuff up since I'm going to send this off to George with new titles and all for inclusion next time. Right. Can I clean up items one to six, not the preamble, but items one to six, the six we sort of talked about today so that all the changes can be accepted so it's just more readable for the next meeting? Yeah, how do people feel about that? Do they want to... Uh, I'm comfortable wanna, with that. Um, or do people want to leave it the way it is for the moment just to double check? Um, the the comments are still there though, right? Um, I've been deleting some comments of particularly mine that were addressed, but I can stop deleting. I, I cannot delete certain comments. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I have, I'm keeping track of all my objections. So Thank you. Um, I, I'll, I'll be able to share later. So you're okay with it being cleaned up? I'm okay with that, Sarah. Okay. Sarah. Sarah yeah. Andy. It doesn't necessarily mean our agreement. It's just no, right. no, we're not. We have not voted. Yeah, believe not, me, we know that. No, it's, no that's all right. We have for we ease of readability, right. so that right. it's closer to final next time, because hopefully we can get it to final then. Yeah, right. right. Okay. Good. So Manny will do that cleanup. Um, we will. This will be obviously again item number one on the agenda for July. What is it? July twelfth. And uh, just quickly, uh, the uh, uh, surveillance technology bylaw has been sent out for legal review. It's possible that that could be back in our hands before July 12th. I just don't know. Um, I do plan to start us back into the process of, of bylaws for future consideration, which we've obviously suspended now for almost a month and a half. Um, but our primary task will be to try get this finished. And unfortunately, it won't be further to July, whatever it is, council meeting, but we will get it finished. Um, and we may have surveillance. And I hope, I very much want to start um, the uh, process again for bylaws. And I may reach out to some of you individually in your particular areas where you're working and see where you're at, or just give you a, a, a prod. But um, I assume the rest of the summer, um, we will be focusing on this. And we did agree at one point to, if we have to, to meet more frequently just to get it done. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to do that yet, but I think that's something to keep in mind. Um, George? Sarah, I'm sorry, Darcy. Sarah, Sarah might have been first. No, I, I, I just, I looked at you and said, Sarah. Oh. <laughs> uh, is the holdup on surveillance technology just hearing from KP Law? Exactly, yes. Yes, and I don't think it makes sense for us to do our review until we have the law for legal review in hand. So yeah, I, I, and I will remind Paul, uh, you know, as it gets close to our next meeting date, because um, he does often need reminding um, with this stuff, but it has been sent out right away. Mandy sent it to me and I sent it right to Paul and Paul acknowledged. So he did acknowledge he had it and he did send it out. So I think we'll have it. I'm sorry, it was actually you, Darcy, right? It was TSO, TSO sent it. Um, we have, I don't have the minutes in front of me, so um, we're not going to do minutes. Do we have any public present? I need to look. I don't see anyone. 
Okay, we do not. Um, so I think we're done. Thank you, uh, everyone. Yeah. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. I'm adjourning.